Hello everyone and welcome back to my Mars colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.6.1. In this episode we begin with the Mars transfer vehicle and its peculiar conundrum. And uh, one comment was that I should try and do a partial aero capture, you know, do some of the capture by passing through Mars's atmosphere. Of course that would take extensive testing to get the altitude right, you know, what is the right altitude where we could pass through the atmosphere and not break off anything important. <laughs> Uh, so I'm, I am, I'm hesitant to do that and I don't think it's the best solution right now. In fact, uh, I've come up with an alternative that I'll talk about in a moment. But one thing I did test in a diff different save for full disclosure was uh, dumping the airlock module and the lander and these uh, forward um, tugs, which I'll probably omit completely on the next version of it. Just dumping all that stuff and seeing if that would give us enough delta V to capture and the answer is no. So that I did check out just to see and what I came up with though is well the way I figure it is if we strand it around Mars it's tough to refuel it because we have to get the fuel all the way out here and it'll take a long time anyway. Um, it'd be better if we could get back to Earth and I figured out a way. So focusing back on us here it'll take a full orbit <laughs> oddly enough uh, so actually uh, there's a maneuver here but you can see 507 days that's our that's our orbital period right now is 507 days and what we need to do is lift our orbit up so that uh, after I mean after we pass by Mars uh, lift our orbit up so that it's tangent to Earth it was tangent to Earth before but Mars is changing that a little bit um, and then we can get back to Earth in 839 days and this burn here it will be out in solar space and it will be 547 meters per second and then the burn to capture around Earth as you can see is another 500 and uh, I just turned off the ion engines and uh, turned on the methane engines and saw that I had about 520 meters per second right now um, that's how much we have uh, for the methane engine and this burn would take 576, but we'll be diminishing some of the xenon gas with this burn in 507 days. And also the xenon gas can help a little bit in the capture. And strictly speaking, um, if we loosen this up a bit, I think. That's the nice thing about the earth capture. The earth capture burn does not have to take a whole lot. Yeah, then we can uh, get it below 500 there. So it's feasible, and this will return in 800 days. By that time, the next Mars transfer vehicle will already be on the way to Mars. But it's best to have this hardware back to Earth and then refit it, potentially add some methane uh, oxygen tanks, you know, change things up a little bit, and then refuel it there, rather than trying to do it all the way out here, I think. So this is the option I'm going for, and so it's just going to fly by Mars. It's not even going to do anything for the rest of the way in. Uh, but in the interest of, uh, well, the curiosity of it, we'll watch it fly by Mars at the right time. Right now we can time warp with it. Uh, we have a maneuver to do with the Mars scanner. Actually, uh, for some reason, I think there's something... Uh, in, when I uh, was checking out uh, this situation, when I, you know, dumping the modules off and seeing whether it was feasible to do that, I saw that the Mars scanner timing was a little bit uh, off and I wanna yeah see I mean I don't know why this raw timer was at that number when this node was actually three hours ago so we're gonna have to redo all of this it missed Deimos but that's alright I mean that's parked in orbit around Mars anyway it'll hit Deimos again soon enough so we just have to figure out when so well, that's an encounter and we'll have to do that node Okay, but mainly it's going to be the SAP pack coming in. But I think the Mars transfer vehicle is going to hit periapsis before that. Let me check. Or maybe it's in the day. It's in the day. Okay, so the next thing is the SAP pack, and then we'll watch the Mars transfer vehicle fly by Mars. Okay, we just had atmosphere, not atmosphere, SOI entry for the SAP pack. It's got power miraculously enough and uh, we would like to get its periapsis down because it's got the heat shield that needs to get into the atmosphere so let's see well that's sorta right but let's do it properly 
Nope, actually it was right to get it mixed up because of course the thrusters are backward facing. Back to the other one again. We have five ignitions with the BE7 engine. Um, I think we have to use one right now. So we've got four meter heat shield and basically five tons of mass. Now well, I'll check the spreadsheet, but let me just set it to 50 kilometers for now. And then temporarily, let's get caps lock on and turn to sundown while I check. Okay, so the heat shield loading on this particular probe is potentially higher than on the on the other missions and that's because we're not using an inflatable heat shield the question is whether I leave these pedal pedals out or tuck them in and uh, maybe I'll just tuck them in and see um, I don't know I'm of two minds about that let's take a look at far here what does it read as the surface area reference area 27 meters squared so and then uh, let me just temporarily close these. Retract solar panel. And now it's four, uh, no, 11. Uh, maybe I'll go with 48. And maybe we won't need to use them. Or maybe we will. We'll see. Uh, I was originally thinking about 46 if we just use the heat shield and don't use these. The problem with using these is I don't know if uh, their heat tolerance is good enough. It's only 1,700 Kelvin. Oh, all right. Let, let's just assume we're just using this heat shield. Well, we'll go with this for now. Okay, I'm so indecisive, but... You know, I want these satellites. I really want these satellites around Mars. And when you think about it, we can use the engine to help us capture after the fact. So I've got to keep that in mind, so that we have that option. Okay, well, anyway, let us... Add an alarm at, uh, close to periapsis, and we'll turn to the Mars transfer vehicle flying by Mars. Okay, here we go, and let's hope that our flyby of Mars will produce the planned results so that our nodes can be properly affected. We see Olympus Mons and those three other. Mount Volcano Mountains that I never remember the name of. And Valles Marineris right there. Temporary camera change. A 120 ton vessel scooting by the Mars landscape. And now headed out. Well, it's with some trepidation, but this is probably for the best. Okay. Let's add some more time warp. As it departs. Okay, well, that's good enough for me. Oops, I don't know what the... Yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty good right there. Let me drop the HUD and... Well, it's back on its way home now. So I'm going to add its alarm. Uh, let's, let's slow down so the alarm timing is right. Okay. And let's turn to the SAP pack and make sure it at least gets into orbit around Mars safely. Okay, we are approaching with the SAP pack, but the RCS turns have sort of caused our periapsis to deviate a bit. I'll wait until we're a little bit closer so that we... Don't have to worry about electric charge. Okay, so let's fix that. So lately I've been reconsidering the whole hydrogen and oxygen thing versus methane and oxygen. I think it'd be a lot easier to base everything off of hydrogen and oxygen, especially since we have the huge solar panels on a lot of our vehicles. And I mean, the downside is we don't know how much boil off they should be getting because uh, right now it's not being tracked when we're not focused on the vessel. 
I'll have to work on that and see exactly how much should have been uh, lost. But, yeah, I mean, because there's water everywhere in the solar system. And I'd rather have a system that works all over the place. And also, when we introduce nuclear engines, finally, uh, it'll be a lot easier to work with those if we already have hydrogen systems, available stuff to store hydrogen, right? As opposed to methane, which isn't quite so good as far as passing it through a uh, nuclear thermal rocket. Of course, once we have nuclear engines, also the reactors, if they're bimodal, can be used to cool the system. But also on our Mars transfer vehicle, it's uh, got those huge solar panels and those could actively cool the tanks as well, especially when the ion engines aren't on. So that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking maybe a switch to hydrogen and oxygen would be a good thing. But I'll have to work out the math to see. I mean, maybe not everything. This probably should have had a tons of boil off by now. I mean, there's no way it should have had the delta V it has right now. But, you know, we've already got the BE-7 engine and, of course, the the lander, the blue moon. And I'm thinking of making a BE-3U. That should be a good engine to use. But, of course, we'll have to have a separate launch engine. Another sort of uh, consideration is that uh, technically, you could make a hydrogen-oxygen system renewable. In other words, well, when you take hydrogen and oxygen and combine it to get thrust, you end up with water, predominantly. I mean, like 99% water. And then, of course, you can use solar energy to split the water into hydrogen and oxygen again. So, it could be, you know, if you will, carbon neutral. And I w I've always liked that aspect, assuming you don't use SRBs, of course. And so we'll have to think about, you know, will the system need SRBs? Will it need some other boosters? But it could be a good thing overall. Okay, let's get surface negative relative velocity. I want to close up the pedals, but first, I mean, ideally, we want to make sure that these thrusters do their thing first and then close it because they're not supposed to be working while they're covered. I don't know if that's actually barred or not, but it'd be a nice thing to not have to use them too much when we've retracted the panels. You, you can stop. Okay, let, let me just turn off the RCS and see what happens. If it, if it really goes out of control, I'll turn it back on again, but we'll try it. Maybe I should have spin stabilized it, actually. Very tense moment. It might be too low. Uh, we'll see. No, I think it's okay. After the Mars scanner, I want to try and land our base. That's probably gonna be dodgy. We'll see. We may still need to use the stage to help us capture at this rate. But it won't be too much delta V. That's a heck of a lot better than, you know, like... Actually, I should have extended the panel. Shoot. Extra braking. When I said that's good, I might have spoke, spoken a bit too soon, but... Should be salvageable, hopefully. This delta V is obviously wrong. But... Basically, as long as we're below 4,700, we've captured. No particular significance to a one-day orbit. I mean, if... If you went for a Martian day, that'd be different. But this is obviously not a Martian day. And I don't remember off the top of my head how long a Martian day is. And besides, our 46 degree inclination would probably mean that that's not very important. Okay. Uh, we're close to our apoapsis and... Actually, we want to turn retrograde right now because backwards thrusters. And we'll raise that periapsis to a safe level. The, the transfer stage itself has communications, so we'll probably want to keep it around too. I don't think it's a relay though. Okay, stability. 
Sun orientation is good. All right, now we have to sort out who we're going to throw out here. I guess that'll do. All right, that one first. And we have to switch to it. And it never lets me activate the engines by normal staging. And give a poof. And satellite one is departing the transfer stage. Okay, let's clear it a little bit more and prograde. The little thruster is tiny. It's only a 0.4 kilonewton. If we need to make corrections, it's got plenty of fuel for that. Okay, maybe seven hours. Seven hours. That's good enough for me. Okay, but make sure that we've got sun. And I swear I never want to hear from this again. I guess that's another thing. Uh, we're going to rename it first. That's important. Um, Mars, Mars Sat 1 Relay. We got the sap pack go around one orbit and then release another one. Well, I've uh, done an orbit, but I've got to admit I probably thought about this the wrong way, because even for because it's not a circular orbit for either of them, Marsat one is going slower when it gets to here. Ah, whatever. <laughs> it's still it's still interesting. We're, uh, you can see highly inclined compared. It's almost like a Molnia sort of orbit thing going on right now. And, well, plenty of communication back to Earth, so that's good, too. Yep. All right. Well, like I said, whatever. We're still oriented with respect to the sun. And we want to release the one that's opposite that one, which is this one. And that is, in fact, the next one to be released. So here we go. And switch. And activate, activate, and poof. Okay, well, that's not very precise, but it'll do, it'll do. All right, next one. Well, I guess it's not too bad. There's sat number two and sat number one. I guess that'll mean there's another one here, another one here. That's good enough for them to communicate across. So we can release the third one now. I do want to get this done before we have to focus on the Mars scanner, which is actually going to Deimos. Okay, this is still oriented fine, and either one of the remaining satellites will do. So separation, switch, activate. Oh, I didn't. I, I didn't mean. Actually, that's another way to activate them without uh, actually using the engine to poof them out. I, of course, I have colliders on the solar panels, and I guess opening the solar panels will actually force the satellite out. I was afraid they'd explode, but it looks like that works. Good times. Still, separation poof. All right, prograde. I sort of regret. Packing such a... Oh, what happened? Oh, I didn't activate that properly. Um, such a low power thruster on these. You can see the stage time is 24 minutes. I don't know why I decided to torture myself. Well, I do. Um, this is the correct thruster. The physical size of the thruster is correct. So, um, if I wanted to have... Uh, have a bigger thruster I would need to have I guess I could have put three in a row or something you know okay so here it is with three satellites one there one there one there and this is where we're gonna start the last one out they're not exactly in perfect orbits and they'll probably drift quite a lot and be completely out of position when we need them but they still have a lot of fuel to correct that and yep last one so just Separate, switch, 
and this time I'm actually I'll, I'll activate this engine but I'll try and use the extending solar panel method to get it out yeah not a bad idea okay and activate those RCS okay I did the Mars scanner burn off camera and we are now approaching Deimos and we shouldn't have a whole lot of speed to burn off once we get there so no need to set up ahead of time it looks like a periapsis of 34 kilometers which seems okay and these days communication is great because we've got all those Marsats deployed now you can see it's connecting with all of them unfortunately well they most looks fine here it's shady on the map though uh, I did too much <laughs> uh, that's one of those complicated things <laughs> look at that that that's some some interesting stuff go around pretty sure that means that we actually stay in orbit around Deimos but I think I need RCS to deal with this situation there we go uh, we might be a little bit oh, okay yeah a little bit too high to Let, let's go around the periapsis to bring it down we should probably also our inclination is 145 that doesn't seem like it's good for scanning so somewhere around here we'll tilt oh Deimos I see still has the odd spike on the pole some things don't change good long orbital period though one day this orbital period around Deimos that's I, I feel like that's longer than Deimos's own orbit around Mars isn't it so it takes us more it takes more than one Deimos orbit around Mars to get around oh I sh we should orient sundown it's weird Deimos is very strange maybe that wasn't a whole over let me see what is, it, what is its orbital period uh, its rotation period is one day and six hours it's probably tidally locked so I guess that would be about the same I mean I'm guessing that this is not exactly the best altitude for scanning too low Let's see, what, what has uh, ScanSat done for Phobos with that scanner? Not a whole lot. This is this Phobos, right? Yeah. That scanner only caught a little bit, probably when it was on its way in even. Being in orbit around. Maybe I should just change the parameters in the configuration file because, you know, something that's in orbit around, around one of these moons should be able to scan it, darn it. I'll think about that here well we got a fair equatorial block that was probably again on the way in anyway we'll have to see about that um, sundown yeah okay we'll get power at least and we'll think about what to do about scan sat and how these things are scanning but for now we got a scan sat around Deimos so that is successful let me turn to our base module and see if we can land that sucker. Okay, so here we are with the base module. This will be the last thing I do for this episode. We've already got the parachutes armed. And we'll see how well that goes. Communication is okay. And in fact, pretty good. Um, we're communicating through MarsSat 4, it looks like. We've also got a direct line back, but we actually have a line to all four of the Mars sats at the moment though of course the critical point is periapsis and taking a look at our nope that's not scansat this is scansat taking a look at the map here this is Mars and or and we see on this orbit uh, we will get down to periapsis here and it's well there's a patch there that we haven't covered yet I guess we don't have any data it doesn't say zero ore but it looks like it's in the midst of quite a lot of ore so it might be okay to land there I don't know if it's the optimal place but it's a place and we might as well go for it this is roughly equatorial anyway or at least in line with Phobos and Deimos that's the important part 
So I'm going to proceed and at apoapsis we'll bring down our orbit again into, into the atmosphere. It's around the terminator there, that's not great, but I want to get this over with, uh, test it out. And then next time, next time we are going to focus on building stuff around Earth again. So our Mars focus will change and we'll be launching stuff on, once again. So, retrograde, it probably doesn't matter. We're going to have to use the RCS anyway, but... Okay, uh, well, it's about 40 kilometers is what I'm going for here, and that should be enough. So let's get going. Hopefully it won't bring us down too quickly. Well, since we're in the dark anyway, I can retract these. Okay, we are in the atmosphere. It's wiggling a little bit. It'll probably settle down once the atmosphere has a better grip on things. We have communication. And I'll pre-ignite. Oh no! <laughs> I thought I was going to stage the engines, but apparently not. Okay, well, it's fine. It's fine. It's probably for the best anyway. I always collide with the... with the heat shield anyway. It'll, it'll be alright, I swear. Okay, activate engine. Oh, it's probably gonna go tug side first. So the thing with the tugs is they're supposed to get back to orbit after dropping off the module, but considering how they unbalance things, maybe I should reconsider that. Or I could put the heat shield on the top instead of on the bottom there, but well, there's, there's a possibility of that, I don't know. Seems dubious though. We either slow down enough for the parachutes to come out safely or we're gonna die. So, probably die? Uh, okay, well the parachutes came out safely. I'm shocked. Okay, fair enough. Or, well, okay, that's fine. They can, they can go off there. That's okay. I am okay with that. Yep, I, I was pretty downcast right there. Uh, I thought that we were gonna lose the whole thing because I had re released the heat shield way too early, but... The parachutes held miraculously. I think maybe the fact that I was in 2x physical time warp may have helped, ironically. Usually that's not a good thing. And I'm definitely not reserving any fuel right now, so... Oh! Oh! No! Oh god, so close! Why do I always do that? I was looking at the suicide burn countdown. Ah, uh, vapor and feed lines. Oh, 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 oh. And here I thought we had it. But no. Knowing my propensity for landing things sideways, uh, some of those contributing to my collaborative career mode on Twitch uh, supply me with self-writing landing legs, uh, basically like these these stabilizers that we have on here, except they would push it upright. I think I should just make some of those. I mean, obviously these don't do the trick, but you could imagine if they were like sort of inverted, they'd be able to push it upright. I think that might be a thing to do. Okay, well, I mean... Toggle ground tether. Well, I don't think that's going to work for it. Enable weight transfer. I don't know what that does. Well, we'll, uh, we'll just keep it here. <sighs> I don't know. I have to work on my landings. What can I say? Maybe someday a Kerbal will visit this and be able to winch it up or something. But that day is not today. So with this... Technically landed, 
but not in the right way on the surface of Mars. I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. Oh, hold on. Let me put on a... Uh, yeah, let me get some solar panels out. Anyway, uh, let me activate those. And uh, we lost one on this side. And we can extend that one. Okay. So with that, see you next time.